All right, in this video, I'm going to very shortly, uh, very briefly show you how to take something in Rhino um, and get it ready for uploading to a service online. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do uh, is improve just how things look. Um, I'll make sure that my view makes sense here. Um, okay, so I'm in perspective view and I'm going to uh, turn off my grid and make the background look a little bit nicer. So to do that, I'm going to go to my options. And then I'm under document properties. I'm going to click on grid. And now I can turn off my grid lines, my grid axes, and my world axis icon, which is the thing down in the lower left there. All right. So now that that's a little clearer, um, another thing I can do is start playing with the display tab settings and some of these settings are also going to be found under options uh, but here is where I could change the background color um, so I could choose uh, to do white instead um, and I can do things like uh, turn off whether curves are displayed um, that's more significant when you have other types of geometry such as surfaces um, Okay, and uh, then the next thing I'm going to do now that I have a, a kind of a more attractive uh, view here is simply to uh, export this to a file. So to do that, I'm going to use my view capture to file command. There's a couple different options here. Um, you capture to clipboard will allow you to just put it on the clipboard so you can paste it into something like Photoshop. Uh, view capture to file will have you pick a file name so just type in your name um, it will save that file off Let's see where this is and if I look at that frame three there it is and I could theoretically upload this right now as it is to my online service um, but I uh, just want to show you a couple other options that you have to work with. I can add a dash before I use this view capture to file command. So if I type dash view capture to file um, and choose a file name, and I'll just choose the same one I used before, uh, then I, it gives me a bunch of other options up here. And here I can do things like change the size of my image. Um, I can manipulate the same uh, grid settings that I manipulated with the options panel. And I can specify whether or not I want a transparent background. If I try this right now and click save or hit enter, um, it's going to save off my file. But if I go and look at this, something isn't quite right there. Um, everything's black in the background. That's because JPEG images can't handle transparency. So with, um, uh, if I turn on transparency, it gets confused. So if I want to have uh, a transparent image, um, I'm going to need to use a different format. Um, and I need to use PNG format for that. PNG images um, store an extra channel of information called the alpha channel and that is the uh, level of opacity of any given pixel um, in your image uh, so you can track that level of opacity pretty precisely All right, so when I save that off and then I open that up over here enter all right there it is so now you can see that the background here is the same color as just this window. Um, so that's a transparent image, and if you want to see what that looks like in Photoshop, um, we can open that up and take a look. And I will grab Google Drive. Okay, so here you can see how Photoshop indicates to you that you have a transparent background. 
uses this checkered background to say that it doesn't have any data for that. Um, so if you wanted to, you could give it a background in Photoshop. So you could use, um, you could create a new layer and move that layer to the back at the bottom of the stack. And then you could um, grab um, your paint bucket tool, which always seems to be hiding. There it is. Um, and then I could just uh, pick a color And that's not the greatest color, but whatever. Um, I, if I'm doing Instagram, I might want to crop my image to a square size. And so if I click on the crop tool um, and then select square uh, from the uh, constraints menu up here, um, it will show me a square box that I can then uh, use to adjust my view. And if I hit enter, then I can save this off. Um, and I can use um, you know, JPEG in this case. Um, the Save for Web option allows you to preview um, basically uh, how it's going to look um, with various image types and compression settings. So with the JPEG you might you can play with um, the quality settings um, and see what the results are. But uh, for the most part, that'll get you the same place as just saving with Save As. Um, and then you have a file that you can upload. All right, that's it.